Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. Today we are going to be showing you how to do drum brakes. Yes, I said drum brakes on a 2011 Volkswagen Jetta. Yes, that's right boys and girls. You heard me correctly. I did say drums and shoes. Surprising as it is, this 2011 is a base model Jetta which has drums and shoes in the rear. Before I get started with today's video boys and girls, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. To most of you young mechanics, you probably have never worked on this sort of stuff. This is a drum and this is a shoe. This used to be the common practice for most manufacturers throughout the world on the rear of most vehicles about 20 to 30 odd years ago. And then farther back, they were also front brakes as well. The drums aren't a terrible option. They generally are reliable and last quite a long time, but they are a pain in the ass to service. But of course they are cheap and that is the number one reason as to why the majority of manufacturers use this setup. Unfortunately though, because they aren't really used anymore, I found out yesterday when trying to source these parts how expensive they are locally to get and how much of a pain it is to find these things. I couldn't believe the price. It would actually be cheaper if the vehicle had rotors and pads to replace in the rear. I could get that stuff way cheaper than I could get this. As you can see, this stuff isn't even coated, so the drums specifically. So what I will be doing is coating them and giving myself less of a headache because I'll be the one who services this car for the remainder of its life, most likely, unless I die or retire. <laughs> That's a little bit gory. So... Now, in terms of servicing these brakes, it can be quite challenging. So you want to make sure that you're prepared to have a headache. The best advice I could give you with drum brakes is to make sure that you only service one side at a time. Do not take everything apart because you will have the other side to reference. The reason why this is important is if you plan on using literature such as Shopkey or Mitchell or any of those programs, most times I find you will often want to rip your face off because they're so inferior and frustrating. It'll drive you potentially to have an aneurysm, which is not something you need or want. So the best advice I could give you is do one side at a time. Make sure you inspect the parts before you pull anything apart to make sure that they are the same. And don't get crappy stuff. Get the best quality stuff that you can get your hands on at the best price. If you get whatever is cheapest, you will generally have a headache later on. Okay, boys and girls, enough rambling about that. Let me show you what the issue is with the Volkswagen design of this particular system. Now, of course, your first few steps would be to get this guy up in the air safely. Make sure you employ the use of jack stands if you're doing this on the floor, and of course, pull your wheels off. Your next step would be to pull off this T30 bit that holds your drum to your hub, and then, of course, it's going to be stuck because these things never usually get serviced, so you'll take a hammer and bash it until it comes off. Unfortunately, with the VW system, there is no screw type adjustment. If there was a screw type adjustment, we could still get some life out of these shoes and drums. Unfortunately, they went ultra cheap. This piece here is your adjuster. You really can't adjust it. It is self-adjusting. So when the pad life over here exceeds a certain limit and you apply the brakes, it will automatically lock up, which is a problem that we're having on the other side. So the solution to this is to, of course, replace the shoes and the drums so that you have the most amount of material there so that this stupid thing doesn't fall out of adjustment. Now, as you can see, there are a hideous amount of springs on this thing. We have one spring here, another spring here, another spring here, a spring behind that, and two springs here and here. We also have another spring here that holds this stupid thing, the emergency brake cable, in place. This is the main issue with servicing these goddamn things. They are a pain in the ass, and these springs are just there to take your nails off the ends of your fingers or to bash your finger. So, there are tools that are made specifically to get these springs but they don't generally do a great job i'll give you an example this my friend is an old school spring tool that i used to use i haven't used this thing in years it literally sits in my drawer and collects dust how it works is you unscrew the handle like this you slide your spring into that little sliver there and you screw it back down clamping it once you put tension on these goddamn things you're then supposed to develop superhuman strength and yank the goddamn damn spring off that is a pain in the ass and it doesn't work on springs like this because there's barely any meat there for me to get this tool on you can get it on the spring up here but it's also a pain in the ass so i have a solution it also does require superhuman strength but it works much better now the solution to doing this is right here in my hands a six inch needle nose vice grip this is the best 
best tool by far to take care of these springs. Now the only other way you can take care of this situation is of course to not do the job at all. But boys and girls, I call myself a professional mechanic so I've got no choice but to complete this. Plus I really like this customer. They're nice people. What we're going to do is start pulling this thing apart. Now before you attempt this job, what you should know is if you don't have this tool, do not attempt this job. Go and buy this thing. Second thing is do not attempt this job without wearing a mask because this dust here is very toxic and will cause cancer at some point in your life. What you can do to remedy that is wash it all off with brake clean. That works. Use a bucket to catch the residue and then you can throw it in with your waste oil if you're doing this at home and someone will gladly take care of it. Whatever you do, do not pour it down the drain. Make sure you wear eyeglasses and that you are cognizant or aware of wherever your hands are placed in regards to the spring. If you get tagged by one of these springs, it will end your work day for sure and possibly your work week. These little guys are under a lot of tension and they can potentially break nails or fingers, the tips of your fingers, which is never fun. So enough rambling. What you want to do, get your vice grip here, clamp it as tight as you can, and then pull the spring out like so. Don't just throw the spring anywhere willy-nilly. Get a table and lay it out as it is and the way that you take it off from the vehicle. So that way you have some sort of diagram or take a picture or make a video. Now we're going to go ahead and get our top spring off. The key thing with the top spring is because your wheel cylinder is here is you want to be aware of where your shoes are when trying to yank the spring off. So what I like to do is take my hand, place it here, grab this guy here and yank on the vice grip. Of course, you won't be able to see it, but the hook for the spring is going through this hole here. So your whole goal is to pull the spring far enough so you can pull this guy back toward you. Like so. Let the blood come back into your head and then place your spring on the table the way it came out. I'll show you why it is I don't really care much for the VW adjustment system. It's not that it's not cool. Yes, it's cool, but it's stupid because it's not very simple in terms of adjustment. You can't really do much. For lack of a better term, it's a dumbass design. On their point, it's easy because it's a couple of pieces versus two or three pieces that have to be heavily machined. So you save quite a bit more on the cost of the parts when manufacturing but for the customer it doesn't perpetuate longevity or reliability because there's no real solution to it other than replacing this crap so the way this works is well first off I'll show you by removing the spring pull that guy out that one's nice and easy you don't have to you don't have to put all kinds of pressure when trying to remove it but the way this works is when it is brand new this guy here will sit way up that allows these guys to come together now when your shoes come together like so you have all sorts of room now as you press the brakes and as they retract what happens is is this guy continues to expand the two rotor or two shoes away from each other by pushing on this shoe and this lever, which pushes that shoe. So you can see there how it gets wider and wider. As it gets wider and wider, you run out of adjustment. We could still get some life out of these shoes if it wasn't for this stupid system and we had a twist type or screw type adjustment. Anyhow, most cars don't have this crap today, so uh, this segment was brought to you by complete un utter uselessness. Anyhow, let's, let's continue with removing all this crap. Okay, boys and girls, now we are going to, yeah, let's leave that spring there. There's no real science to this. I'm not going to read up exactly how to take this apart. I'm just going to wing it because that's what I usually do and I'm usually fine. Expand your vice grip like this to fit over this spring here. Clamp just this outer portion, not the actual spring. And then you want to push down and turn it 90 degrees. You should have a spring and retainer portion that come off just like this. Do not lose these pieces, otherwise you will be purchasing a hardware kit, which will add to the bill and your heartache. Then pull this guy out from the back so it doesn't drop or get in the way when trying to pull this crap apart. And then you can pull this shoe off. Don't lose these parts or mix up how they go. As you can see, there is an indentation there. So make sure you put it back in the same way. I always like to do the shoe with the handbrake assembly last. The reason being is because there's usually more components that are a bit more of a pain in the ass. Now, before you go ahead and pull this assembly apart, what you want to do is take this spring off on the other side. 
course it's out of frame so I will be back. What you want to do is pull off this remaining hardware here that is for the emergency brake and the adjustment. What you want to do is, well, make sure this guy doesn't come out. So push that guy back in, let him be happy. Now, what you want to do is get your handy dandy vice grip, clamp the spring and clamp it tighter and pull it off. Oh God. Yeah. Fuck you car. Fucking pile of shit. <sighs> I'll tell you, the person who came up with this design, brilliant, brilliant, my friend. Yank the spring out, take note that it goes in one way, like so, and place it on your diagram bench table over there. Now, you should be able to yank this out. If not, don't yank it off, leave it in place. Now we'll get the shoe off. If when you're trying to remove this combination, this guy starts to twist, what you can do is put your finger on the back of the drum plate and just hold it stationary and then twist this guy 90 degrees. Now you can see that everything is loose. All we gotta do is carefully pull it apart and not lose track of how it went together. So you can see there, there is a little bit of a hook. So make sure you remember that this guy is on the front. You can also use a marker to help you with remembering that sort of stuff. Now the only thing that is left for us to do is to remove our shoe from this lever that connects to our emergency brake cable. How this is done is by compressing this spring. What you need to do is grab this end here with your vice grip, then grab this end here with your hand and force it forward. Grab it tighter with your vice grip when that sort of thing happens. And then just twist it. As you push back like this, you want to twist it to get the line into that section there and then pull it off. Now with all that stupidity that is a drum brake setup gone, what you should do now is clean the backing plate. Soap and water used to do the trick in the old days. Now what I use is just brake clean. Works just as well. Plus you get that nice chemical smell, right? Get a light spritz so that all that shit runs off and doesn't get into your lungs and then hammer it. You can take a little bit of a brush and just brush stuff where there's excessive amounts of dirt. Most of it's just dust for us, so we're good to go. Our next step is going to be to blow this thing, let it dry off, and then we'll put some grease in some strategic areas. And now just blow dry it. Now what we want to do is get some brake grease out and put some grease in certain areas. So if you look carefully, once all the dust is gone, you'll see these little pads here like this that rest on the backing plate. Those specifically are where your shoes basically lay on the backing plate and are held in place. What you want to do is be a little bit generous with the grease so that every time you apply the brakes, they don't squeak. Now the other two spots to grease on this setup is here and here, specifically in the groove where your shoe sits. Again, you can be generous with how much grease you put in those two spots, but on the wheel cylinder side, you don't want to be overly generous because grease can have not such a good effect on these wheel rubbers here, which uh, you don't want leaking because again, you'll be playing with all this crap and dealing with wheel cylinders is not fun, especially when you live in the rust belt and the bolts that hold the wheel cylinder break and then you try to get these little special bolts that will fit without boring a hole in the new wheel cylinder anyhow boys and girls that's enough rambling about that shit just don't gob it on so you end up giving yourself more of a headache later on of course do the other side and now you can do the process in reverse to put everything back together now, of course, grab your brand new shoes. Keep in mind, there is a reason why I said to do this one at a time. You can see here, boys and girls, there is a difference. Now, this happens very rarely, but there is a left and right shoe on this particular setup. If you put this guy on, you will cry yourself to sleep tonight. If you put this guy on this side, you will be happy. How we know this is because we can compare the old one that we took off and it's not sitting there with the other one. So we're not going to get mixed up. Key to success with drum brakes. Don't screw it up. Now what you need to do with the drum brake setup or hand brake setup, sorry, is not clamp this guy. Now to put it back on, we need to clamp this guy here, the spring, just the small end section of it. And don't be overly aggressive with it because it will wreck stuff. You want to push it back like this and then sneak 
your new shoe into place. This can be, of course, very challenging sometimes and may make you want to cry, but it can be done, boys and girls, and it will be done. If yours is extra, extra painful to get on, another thing that I do or have done in the past is, of course, the tool that I'm looking for is missing. Give me one second, boys and girls. You get a V-type clip remover like this, sneak it in, and then you can push back. But keep the vice grip on the back side so that this guy doesn't escape because you load it up with pressure and it can sometimes be dangerous. So this is the effect that you want, something like that there, and then you can easily sneak your piece in. Like, come on, damn you, like so. I'll just pull the pry bar out and your vice grip and there you go. I hope I got that on camera. Let's do that again. So I did get it on camera. Of course it was a terrible shot. So I'll show you again. Just like that boys and girls, that's how you get it off. Now take this guy here, place it between the aluminum piece at the end of the cable and the spring and then use the vice grip to pry it back like so. You hold it like this. Then what you do is you take your new shoe and slide it into place like so and then make sure that it is sitting properly like that and then you can slide your pry bar out and then your vice grip and there you go we can now go ahead and put our shoe onto the backing plate what you want to do is first get this guy clean it up with some brake clean then remember how it goes together but before you put it together apply a little bit of grease just douse it all in this area here, wherever it's going to make contact with anything. Uh, why that is, is so that you don't get all kinds of squeaking and crap that'll happen later on when the brakes are applied. Slide this guy into place like so, and then close the shoe down on it. Then place it like this into place. Make sure that the shoe is sitting in this groove here, as well as the groove up top on the wheel cylinder. Then get this pin, put it through the backing plate and make sure that it protrudes through the shoe. Then what you want to do is get your spring and your retaining clip, hook them up to this guy here, just the retainer, not the spring, clamp it down, put your finger on the back of the push rod and twist it, twist it, twist it. God damn you. Okay, let's try that again. Put your finger on the pin and twist the spring and retainer 90 degrees. This guy is installed. Now what we can do is start putting back some of the other hardware. Of course, before you put the hardware on, go ahead and spray it with brake clean to get rid of all this dust and crap. And then blow it off before you put it on the car. Use your blow gun. Slide your spring into place like so and then let it sit there. Now, our next step is to put the spring back on this stupid piece here. So we are going to get our favorite vice grip again, and now pry this guy with all our might to slide it over this hardware piece here. Son of a... Oh, why the fuck do I do this for a living? Okay, god damn it. Be careful when doing this uh, spring. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Now, apply some grease to this area here and get it ready to receive the new shoe. Now again, very important, there is a right and left side to the shoe setup. You can see there, they look exactly the same, but on this side, this piece of hardware is riveted in place. Make sure you use the correct side, so do not screw this step up by comparing it to the old crap that you took off. Slide this guy into place nice and gently. Try to line it up as best you can. Push it together, get your pin, slide it through, stupid compressor. Adjust your vice grip to fit over the retainer, and push your pin on with your finger and then twist it 90 degrees, like so. With it in place, what we're going to do now is get this guy back in its home. Of course, we're going to clean it off first and put some uh, grease on it. Yeah, let's do that. Now, the grease layer on this thing is very thin. You don't want to put too much. You just want a very little bit. You want to keep it from rusting so that the stupid thing doesn't get stuck. Remember the orientation of this thing and then put it behind your shoe and slide it into place like so. When you get it into place, what you're going to do is then place this goddamn spring on. With your spring in place, you can now go ahead and put the other springs that held the bulk of the tension and these stupid things together into place. And then we'll force this guy up and then it will self-adjust. 
at least that is the hope. Now we can go ahead and put our top spring into place. Remember the orientation of the spring. It doesn't sit like this, it sits like this with this particular application. It is very important to get the orientation of these springs correct because if you put them in the wrong way, they will not function properly or can cause you grief by ways of noise or catastrophic failure because they will fail and the brakes will come apart completely. So take photographs, that's another great thing you can do to really help yourself. Clip that in there, get your vice grip. Erwin, I'm open for a sponsorship of some more vice grips. Of course, most of my friends will tell you that I have enough vice grips, but uh, you can never have enough vice grips, right? Okay, clip that guy, make sure it's in the proper position. Support the pad or shoe with your hand, and it's time to clamp that guy stronger. To the point where you have double vision, clamp down on the spring so that that doesn't happen. Clamp it, put it back into place, secure it with your hand, secure the shoe with your hand, and then pry this guy. Move the adjuster all the way up that you can. Force that guy together and ah, bring him together like a dating website. Ah, okay, what a stupid design. Thanks for nothing, VW. You idiots. Okay, yeah, once you get the spring in place, what you're going to do is put that adjuster in, wiggle it up as far as you can. Now, grab your bottom spring and prepare for double vision again. You can put a little bit of grease on these springs, not really needed. Come on, okay. Now, before you button things up and check this thing, what you want to do is spray this guy with some white lithium grease. Of course, you should know by now, before you apply the grease, you have to shake well. And then give it a healthy dosage. It's not an absolute requirement, but if you like your customer, you should. And if you don't, well, that's up to you. Now the last required step before we go ahead and put our drum on is to clean the hub surface so that the drum sits on a nice new surface. There's two tools that I like to use that do this job very well. It is a wire cup like this and a flat cookie disc like this. What I usually do is start off with the wire cup and get rid of the majority of the heavy debris and scale. And if there's anything that's left over that I can't get off, then we hit it with the grinder. Cookie grinder, that is. Eye, ear, and nose protection, very important. What you want to do is get off as much of that scale as you can and then get your nice new tub of anti-seize and douse it pretty good so that you don't end up with that type of scale again. Oh yes, look at that boys and girls, isn't it pretty? Yes, yeah, lather it up. Give it a nice, nice good layer, nice thick layer, you know. You ain't get no moisture in there and we ain't gonna have any more rust. Now, don't be too thick on this portion here because if you get one of those little strands from the brush itself stuck between the drum and the hub, you can potentially get some vibrations. Highly unlikely, but do your work properly and you won't have issues. That's generally how things work. Brush it on. It's kind of like painting, except you're not creating a work of art. Uh, you're just fixing what used to be considered a work of art. And I guess now by you being able to do it, you are sort of making a work of art. Look at that, boys and girls. That is it. All we have to do now is our last step, which is to put this guy back in the place, connect it down here, and then we can put our drum on and pray to God that the self-adjusting system that VW has come up with adjusts properly and doesn't give us a headache. Gotcha. Oh, yes. Put your thumb over it. Slowly release because you don't want that thing to come off. Make sure it's in place correctly. 
All right, boys and girls, we are donezo on this side. I'm gonna go do the other side and then we will show you what we do with the drums. Now, with our drums, what we're going to do is coat them because these things never come coated. It's very rare that you actually get these things coated. And this particular one, even though it's made in China, where pretty much everything is made these days for cars, is a decent quality one. It's made by a reputable manufacturer. So I'm hoping that I don't run into any issues with it. Now, what we're going to do is get all the oil that is on this thing off. Give it a nice healthy dosage of brake clean and then wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. Wipe it down, do the same thing to the other side. Make sure you get inside the groove nicely because that is where my friends these things like to rot and then have a parade at the expense of your happiness wipe it down nicely go over it a few more times and get it prepared for paint of course i'm not going to show you how to paint if you would like to see that leave a comment below before you go ahead and spray your drum down what you want to do is mask off the surface area where the shoe will actually contact the drum because if you use this coating on that portion it will make an atrocious sound and it's not meant to be on your pad or shoe if you get a little bit in this section here it's fine and i'm purposely leaving it like this because i don't want a rust ridge to build up so that if i ever have to service these brakes or do any kind of repair to them this guy will come off relatively easy without me destroying it you should of course end up with a result like this don't wait for it to dry you can go ahead and peel your tape off so that this effect doesn't happen and you yank off the coating that's there that's all she wrote for this drum boys and girls we can now put this guy into place and then when we put it into place on the car we'll spray the outside of the drum now when putting the drum in place be sure to line up your little hole there for your torx bit that holds the drum secure to the hub what you want to do is make sure you take your time and wiggle it on sometimes if it doesn't want to go on what you can do is bang it like this just a bit to move the shoes into place Force that guy on, line it up as best you can, and then fire this guy home. Now, I'm not sure what the torque spec is, but I know it is a T30 torque bit. The torque spec for me is don't break the goddamn thing. And if you are using a torque wrench, nothing more than seven or eight foot pounds is needed to really hold this guy together. Now, spin it. Make sure that it spins. If it does, that is spectacular. And spin it the other way. Make sure that it is free. And then, boys and girls, you can go ahead, get your can, and spray this guy with as much paint as you like. You can paint it whatever color you like out on this side. Okay, boys and girls, that is it. It's pretty much done. All we have to do now is go ahead and paint this thing. For me personally, you don't have to if you don't want to at home. You can go ahead and throw your wheel back on, but if you have a drum like this, it'll rot to hell. So we're going to go ahead and paint it. If you're not, you can go ahead and place your wheel back on the car. Now, of course, you should have something that looks like this if you chose to paint your drum. Our next step is going to be to put on the wheel rim. Yeah. Of course, snug it up with your gun. The proper torque for the wheel bolts on this thing is 89 foot-pounds. Don't forget to spray this thing. That's that, boys and girls. We're good to go. Now that you're all done with torquing the wheels, your next step is going to be to get into the car and to pump the brakes. You want to make sure that you fully extend the brake pedal so that way the brakes will adjust. After you do that, you can pull the handbrake, let it back down to make sure that it releases, then check to make sure that your wheels are spinning freely. Then you can go ahead and road test the car if there are no issues. Well, boys and girls, that looks like a thumbs up for me. Thankfully, we are all done with that ancient technology on the floor. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. This used to be the norm 
on most uh for fuck's sake yes that's right i said drum rotors oh god <laughs> oh this is gonna be a long one yes that's right boys and girls i said what are those things again oh fuck what if, what? <laughs> let's just start from the top man. i don't know what the hell i'm saying as you f oh, you fucking cock lip you motherfucking piece of shit push down and twit mother <laughs> I don't remember what the next step is, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> now we can go. Oh, let's fix the camera first. There we go. To the functioning. I'm moving, little bastard. And <clears throat> come on. Why don't you want to go up? Huh? What is your problem? Go up. Yeah, now you want to go up, don't you? Yeah. How about that, Dos Atos? You bitch. That's enough German accent there. Um. I don't know, most of you guys will know what a German accent sounds like. I think it sounds like that. In my head at least. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Give me my, my fucking glove. Pray to God that VW has come up with a system that works properly. Of course, that generally isn't the case. Now the paint that I'm going to use to coat these... Ro now the paint... <laughs> now before you go ahead and paint your rotor... Damn it, it's a drum, Jimmy. It's a drum. God... Why do you make these stupid things anymore? It's not a truck. It's, never mind. And yeah, bleh. now, of course, you should end up with the result something to the effect of the, that's so much shit talk. <laughs> Whatever. We'll see when I'm editing it, so it doesn't rot, and I can fill the void that is formed. That's it's too much. Well, that looks like a thumbs up for me. Well, I gotta spin it first. Damn it. We're all done with this ancient technology, boys and girls. All that's left to do is to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you like the... Oh, fuck. The next... Oh, fuck. I fucked it up. All that's left to do is for you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you like... Ah, oh, fuck. Cation bell so you never whisk... Fuck! Uh <laughs>